It's been a while since I reviewed a good old South Korean horror film. Let's remedy that. Let's do Ganjam Haunted Asylum. Let's go. Ganjam Haunted Asylum stars Wee Ha Joon, Song Wook Lee, and is directed by Byom Sik Jong. What is up, guys? It's time to do a uh, patron request. This one is for The Wolfman. If you have a certain tier, then you can request a review. And he has requested Gunjum Haunted Asylum, and I'm really glad he did. I watched this movie uh, twice now, I think. And, and I, I got this, like, new soundbar. Because I watched this on my phone, like, during my lunch at work. And I was like, that's not going to cut it. Plus, this is, like, a very immersive horror film. You know, they're inside this freaking uh, mental ward, this asylum. And so I watched it on my, my nice setup, my nice TV last night, good sound and everything. That's the way to watch this movie. Holy crap, this was, this was freaking intense. This was insane. So looking forward to getting into this one. So basically you have this YouTube channel that goes by the name Horror Times. And so, you know, they're trying to up their views and uh, they got this show, they're like ghost hunters, you know? And so they have uh, these contestants that come on their show and so they're all going to go to this Gonjam Haunted Asylum. And basically, they just want to last the night, but they also want to finish off in the dreaded room 402. Room 402 is the room that, according to legend, nobody comes out of. If you go into that room, you're dead. Uh, and I believe Gunjum uh, Haunted Asylum is a real place. And uh, this story was based off of a uh, 2012 CNN report where they were talking about the seven... Uh, deadliest places in the world or, or scariest places in the world and Ganjam happened to be one of them. I've always been interested in like haunted establishments anyway. There's just some, maybe it's just a horror fan in me. I don't know. Also the story is that there's this director probably like a hundred years ago and the rumors were that she was like torturing the patients and all that and so the legend is that the ghosts are still there you know and it, if you go into room 402 that is where the director is. And that plays into the movie into the final act. But once they get in there, there's a little bit of tomfoolery going on. When you have any type of production, of course, you're going to try to plant some scares here and there. So that way your audience really buys into what you're doing. Even though they find out later that they didn't have to do that anyway. Gonzum happens to be a really scary place. <laughs> Now there's a point in the movie, like I stated earlier, where, where there's like some scares that are planted. The Horror Times team, they're trying to pull off a good production. But then, at one point, it's real. Like, this character sticks his arm inside this like wooden chest all of a sudden like one of the ghosts just like pulls his arm and from that point on uh insanity ensues now after watching this one thing that came to mind and i never want this to ever come to mind was halloween resurrection this is a very similar plot to halloween resurrection you have this this like entertainment tv crew uh, and they want this uh, these contestants to stay for the night in the myers house that's pretty much the exact same plot as this, but this would have been a lot better than freaking Halloween Resurrection. They should have went this way and maybe put Myers inside the asylum. I don't know. Which brings a thought. What if a South Korean director like Byom Sik Jung, what if he actually directed a Halloween movie? Oh my God, I'd be in. Because South Korean filmmakers are insane. No, they're not insane. They're just very talented. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, and I think with any foreign film, one of the nice things about watching these movies from another country is you know that you're not going to get what you're used to here in America. And, and, you know, and I'm sure they probably say that about us. You know, that's why a lot of foreign countries love American films. I've been to foreign countries before and they've told me, yeah, I love American films. And maybe that's why. Maybe it's just different to them, you know. Putting it out there right now, South Koreans, they know how to scare. I would say in terms of just scaring an audience, South Korean is probably one of the best. South Koreans and, and, and definitely Japanese filmmakers too. I guess just Asian filmmakers. They're really good at their craft of scaring an audience. Getting 
creative, thinking outside the box. And there's a lot of that in this movie. Uh, and, and this is the type of movie that you definitely want to watch with a really good sound system. Now, I gotta say, I really enjoyed the cast in this as well. The three female contestants are Aeon, Park Young, and Charlotte. And funny enough, she works for, I think, CNN. Maybe it's like an Asian branch of CNN. I don't know. But uh, she's the one character that actually speaks a few lines of English in the movie. And she has this great scene, uh, I believe it's with Aeon, where they're like in the woods. Because at one point, they end up leaving the asylum. Because who wouldn't want to leave that place? The horrors of the asylum, they follow you. You know, once you're in there, no matter where you go, they're, they're going to follow you. And they follow her out into the woods. And I'd say probably one of the scariest scenes in the movie when she's out in the woods. One thing I notice about like South Korean films is there's a lot of hanging. I, I constantly see hanging in these movies. And there's a lot of that in this movie. And hanging to me is really scary. Also, this is a found footage movie. And funny enough, found footage, it might be one of my least favorites. But in terms of like directing, you can have a lot of fun with these types of films because every character in this movie, they have like a GoPro and then they have some cameras like strategically placed inside the asylum. So the ghosts themselves sometimes operate the cameras. Just a lot of interesting uh, ways to present a story. And you never know what's going to like pop up around the corner because the camera angles are constantly changing throughout. With that comes the emotion of the characters. The, the, these characters, once they're in the asylum, at a certain point, they start freaking out. And you see that just basically in their camera movements because the cameras are attached to their own heads. But also, even before they get there, just their like relationship with each other. There's one scene where it shows them at like this water park facility and they just look like they're getting along so well. Just a lot of good chemistry between the characters. And I'm glad that they... Uh, had scenes like that, you know, these characters getting to know each other before they ended up in the asylum. Now, guys, the last act in this movie, as you can probably imagine, there's some really scary shit, okay? I'm not the type of person that really gets scared by movies, but I know when movies are scary. And I will admit, I was just like, wow, this, this is pretty intense, and it doesn't hold back whatsoever. And when you introduce, like, a, a paranormal aspect to horror, it lends an air of uncertainty and you'll definitely see what I mean once you get to that final act. And I didn't even mention, like, inside the asylum, there's, like, the shower room. And there's, like, a supply room. And they play around with that. You know, they plant a lot of different scares throughout in each room. You could tell that the filmmakers probably had a good time doing this. Like, I'm not going to spoil too much, but there was one scene that was really cool where the furniture, you know, these characters that go into this room. And then, at one point, the furniture ends up on the roof, on the ceiling. And then it falls. And it's just insanity. Also, and I've, I've like trumpeted this in the past about how actors in horror movies don't get enough credit. And man, these actors do an amazing job in this movie of selling the scares. It's very convincing, and part of me thinks maybe they weren't even acting in some parts because, damn, they, they were really going for it, like screaming their asses. So in the end, I'm definitely giving this movie a freaking high purchase worthy. This was really fun, and it reinvigorated my interest in found footage films because there's so many bad ones or at least here in america but this is definitely one of the best found footage films i've ever seen if anything it's scary as hell and that's exactly what you want anyway guys be sure to come over to killer flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on fridays we do for our fridays follow me at drum on facebook twitter instagram and letterboxd anyway guys thank you so much for watching have a great day and drum them out